Well, we welcome you today. And once again, I'm kind of in an unusual location. I'm standing right here in an old country cemetery, not too far from where I live. The reason I'm here is this week I've been thinking about a scripture that tells us that something remarkable, something astounding, is going to happen in this very cemetery one day. Now, I can think of many, many times I've been in this cemetery. Uh, most of those times that I've been here, I've been here to help in laying to rest the earthly bodies of some loved one. I've also come out here for solitude. This is a very quiet place. I've come out here to pray, to uh, walk, and to think about the things of God. As I walk through this cemetery, I find that everyone here has a name written on their stone. Many of those names are long forgotten to anyone living. Some of them are marked and people come here and put flowers. Others, it's been many years, I'm sure, since anyone has paid them any mind. Uh, there are stones representing lives that died very young and some very old. Uh, there are stones, undoubtedly, of mothers who died in childbirth, very sad. There are uh, stones of those who died in epidemics over the years. There are stones that are marked with flags representing those who've served this country, and some of them gave their lives. But something else you'll notice about these stones is that nearly all of them are marked with two dates. One of those dates shows the day of their birth. The other date shows the day of their death. And, you know, that is, is something that you see on, on every one of these. And in between the day of their, li their birth and the day of their death is a little dash. And someone has said that dash represents our life. Uh, the Bible tells us that our earthly life is very short, comparatively speaking. Uh, James, the half-brother of our Lord Jesus Christ, the natural-born son of Joseph and Mary, wrote that our life is just like a vapor that appears for a while and then vanishes away. And then I think of what the psalmist said. He said, Lord, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Uh, my life this day, the, the part of the dash, the hyphen that I've been living up to this point, is some 21,000 days long. And you know, I have no way of knowing how much longer my life is going to last. I have no way of knowing, but I know there'll come a time when I'm going to leave this world, just as you're going to leave this world. But you know, as I was coming to this cemetery today, a scripture came to mind, and I want to read it to you. It's, it's from the... 15th chapter of 1st Corinthians because one day the silence of this little country cemetery is going to be broken by a sound that is going to change everything. This silence is going to be shattered by the sounding of a trumpet. The Bible speaks of the trumpet of the Lord. In 1st Corinthians 15 he says, Behold, I show you a mystery. Those of you that have studied the New Testament to any great degree know that that word mystery is not an unknown in the New Testament. It's something that was perhaps unknown under the Old Covenant, but is now known today through the Gospel. So here is something that has been revealed to us in the New Testament, that we shall not all sleep. There's going to come one generation that is not going to know that sleep of death. One generation of Christians is going to be alive at the coming of the Lord for His church. So we'll not all sleep, but we'll all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, a millisecond, less time than it takes for you to blink your eye, this change is going to occur. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. One day there's going to be a great change in this place. One day there are going to be things happening in this cemetery that we cannot even imagine. And so the title of this message and a recurring theme, something I'm going to repeat throughout this message, is this question, where will you be when the trumpet sounds? Where will you be? I'm telling you today not to get ready, but just to be ready. Jesus said in Matthew 24, Be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Where will you be when that trumpet sounds? What if it sounds today? Uh, Matthew 24 also tells us this. Jesus said, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. 
and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence, like the coronavirus, for example, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Uh, now, individuals will tell me, Pastor Tom, we've had all of these things since the fall of man. We've had wars, and we'll always have wars. That's true. We've had epidemics. We've had pestilences. And in my grandmother's day, she lived through the great Spanish flu epidemic. Uh, her family faced an epidemic of, of uh, typhoid fever and lost some in their family. So earlier generations have seen these pestilences, but the end did not come. And we see there's always been famines in various parts of the world. We see Christians being persecuted to a very great degree today. But yes, all of those things have happened. But Jesus said, and I, I want you to take note of something here. He says, these are the beginning of sorrows. Literally in the Greek language, that word beginning of sorrows is odin. And what that means is this. It's the word used for labor pains. Labor pains, the pains that precede the coming of a baby into the world. I want you just to imagine something. Just imagine a new mother and a new father. They're anticipating the birth of a baby and it's getting close to the time and she begins to feel some pain, some contractions. So she calls the doctor and says, you know, I, I'm having some pains. What should I do about this? And he says, well, how far apart are they? How severe? And she says, well, they're ever so often, occasionally. He'll probably tell her, you know, these are just Braxton Hicks contractions. This is nothing for you to be too concerned about. But if she calls him and he says, how far apart? And she says, well, they're coming about three minutes apart and they're lasting about a minute. He's going to tell her it's time for you to get yourself to the hospital or it's time to call the midwife. It's just about time for the birth of this child. Now, why did the Lord use this particular word? Speaking of signs, warning signs of the end. Because even though we've had wars and we've had epidemics and we've had earthquakes, we've had all of these things and these things will continue till the end of time, we can expect that they will grow in duration, they will grow in intensity, and they will grow in frequency, all pointing the way to this fact, Jesus is going to come back to this earth. Jesus is coming. And the question is, when that trumpet sounds, where will you be? Where will you be? Uh, you know, it should not surprise us. Second Peter tells us that in the last days, those who are told about the coming of the Lord, and hopefully you're not in that number, but they'll be scoffers. It says scoffers walking after their own lusts, and they'll be saying, where is the promise of his coming? And they'll say these words, ever since the fathers fell asleep, in other words, our ancestors that, that promised us Jesus was coming. Ever since they fell asleep, all things remain as they have been. They continue as, they've begin, as they have been since the beginning of time. Scoffers. And what they're saying is this, you know, we've heard of the coming of the Lord all of our lives. And what they don't take into consideration is the growing number of signs, warning signs. And what they don't take into consideration is this. They don't take into consideration that God's time is not our time. He says in this same scripture that a day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day. And they also don't take into consideration uh, the very fact that God in his patience is still giving us time. This is a day of opportunity. He hasn't come because he's not willing that any should perish. And they're also failing to realize that God did indeed change this world drastically one other time. He caused a great catastrophe that destroyed much of this world through Noah's flood. So it shouldn't really amaze us that scoffers will come. The question is, where will you be when the trumpet sounds? I think of Jesus' words in Luke 17. He says, as it was in the days of Noah... So shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. 
But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them, destroyed them all. So he tells us they were undoubtedly scoffers before Noah uh, took everything into the ark and, and saved mankind and, and two of every living creature. I'm sure they were scoffers when Lot was warning his family to flee from Sodom and Gomorrah. And there are scoffers now saying that Jesus isn't going to come. But one day he is going to come and the question is, where will you be? Now, back to this cemetery. Looking around in this cemetery, I see that there are two kinds of people here. Of course, they're all dead. But the two kinds of people that were buried here are, number one, some of them made preparation, spiritual preparation, to one day be in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of the individuals that are buried here died in faith. Uh, when their families came here uh, to bury some of these bodies in the area that I'm standing in right now, some of these stones are written in old German script. They represent some of the early pioneers, the early European settlers in this area. Some of them died in faith and their family, I'm sure, even through their tears, they rejoiced in knowing that they would see them again. And I'm not the judge, I can't pick and choose, but I also know that undoubtedly there are many here who live their lives without a thought for Christ. And they died outside of a relationship with Jesus Christ. And even now there are two kinds of people in this world. There are those who are prepared for the sounding of the trumpet, and there are those who are not. There are those who know Jesus, and there are those who do not. There are those who are going to heaven, and there are those who are going to hell. And the Bible continually calls us to choose, to make a choice, to make a decision. We choose who we're going to serve. We, we choose our eternal destiny depending on what we do with Jesus Christ. Where will you be when the trumpet sounds? When that trumpet sounds, first of all, I want you to think of this cemetery. What's going to happen to the bodies of those who died in faith? I want you to turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Uh, the fourth chapter of 1 Corinthians, and we're going to read a little bit about the sounding of the trumpet. We're going to read a little bit about what's going to happen on that day. What's going to happen to the righteous dead. Uh, you see, the Thessalonians were going through great persecution. Some of them even felt like perhaps the Lord had already come and they'd been left behind. Some of them had had loved ones that had already died and Jesus had not yet come. They expected him to come in their lifetimes, undoubtedly. It hadn't happened. And so they wondered, what does all this mean? And the Lord made it very clear he did not want them, nor does he want us, to be ignorant of those things. The Lord wants us to be informed about what lies after this, this life. He wants us to be informed about things that are going to happen in the last days. He doesn't want us to be ill-informed about any of these important truths. So he says in verse 13, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. It's kind of interesting, I find, that that word cemetery in the English language is taken from a much older word, and it literally originally meant a dormitory where people slept. So here is a sleeping place that the bodies of departed souls are, are sleeping, awaiting the day of resurrection. Uh, there are those that believe that our spirit even, even sleeps, but the Bible would differ with that. You know, Jesus, when he was speaking to the repentant thief that was crucified alongside of him, he, he said to that repentant man, This day shalt thou be with me in paradise. And then, of course, the Apostle Paul made it very clear to us that to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. And then, of course, you probably even remember when Jesus was transfigured on that Mount of Transfiguration that Moses and Elijah appeared alongside of him very, very much alive. So know the spirits, the souls of those who are in this cemetery, those who died in faith, have been in the presence of God, some of them for over 150 years. Of course, that's an eternity. 
living in eternity in the presence of God. But their bodies are here waiting the day of resurrection. And he says in verse 14, If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So we might ask, how will he bring them with him if their bodies are here? Will their spirits, their souls, when Jesus comes in the clouds of glory to catch his church away, he's going to bring the souls, the spirits of those who've been with him, those who've died in Christ, those who've died in faith, their bodies again, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So he tells us that what is going to happen, that one day, like I said, the silence of this graveyard, this country cemetery, is going to be broken by the sound of a trumpet. And in a millisecond, the dead in Christ, those who've loved Jesus, those whose bodies have been here, some of them 150 or more years, they're going to rise from their graves. They're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. And if it happens right while I'm preaching this message, if the trumpet sounds, my body will be changed and I'll be caught up. Just a millisecond later, the Bible says, in the twinkling of an eye, caught up to be with the Lord. I'm glad for that day of reunion. I'm glad that one day I'm going to see Jesus and not only am I going to see him, I'm going to see my loved ones that have gone on before. I've lived here for 30 years and I've probably preached close to 200 funerals. And I think of some of those names and I see their names as I walk through these old cemeteries. And I look forward to the day that we will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And he tells us that this is supposed to be a comforting thought. For the child of God, he says, comfort one another with these words. But you know what? Not everyone, not everyone in this cemetery was prepared to meet Jesus. That's the sad reality. The sad reality is not everyone was ready when it came time for them to leave this world. I'm not the judge. Obviously, that's in a higher court than me. That's certainly a higher court than any of us. But there are individuals here who never were ready when they left this world to meet Jesus. Sadly, to leave this world without Christ is to go into a dark eternity. Some have asked me, they said, Pastor Tom, I, I don't understand how it is that a, a good and a loving God could send anyone to hell. But you know, the reality is this. He does not send anyone to hell. People send themselves to hell. Sometimes people have the idea that hell is sort of Satan's domain, that it's where he rules his evil kingdom from. But the Gospel of Matthew says it's a place prepared as punishment for the devil and his angels. The reason why people go to hell is they go to hell because they have rejected his plan of salvation. And so those individuals here that did not make their peace with God, what will happen to this place, their graves, when that trumpet sounds? When the silence of this cemetery is shattered by the sounding of a trumpet, the answer to that is absolutely nothing. Their bodies will be resurrected, but many years later, and they'll be resurrected to stand before what the Bible calls the great white throne. And we read about this in Revelation chapter 20. Speaks of that great white throne. He says in verse 11, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. So I just imagine on that day that many will try to flee away. They'll try to get away from this judgment, but there'll be no place to hide. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. Is your name written in the book of life? It can be. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. I can stand before God one of two ways. I can stand before God basing my eternity on the finished work of Christ on the cross. Or I can stand before God one day at the great white throne and be judged for my works. And I'll tell you something today. If I were to be judged for my works, 
I would be found lacking. If I were to be judged for my works, I would have no other alternative but to be spending eternity in hell. But I'm glad that when I stand before God, I will not be dressed in my righteousness, but dressed in his righteousness alone, thoughtless to stand before the throne. So we need to make a decision. Are we going to place our faith in Christ? Are we going to place our faith in something else? Are we going to gamble our eternity away? Are we going to give our lives to Christ and make sure that when the trumpet sounds that we're ready to meet him? He goes on to say in verse 13, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Some have asked me, what about those who were cremated? What about those who were lost at sea? What about those whose bodies were never recovered? The answer is that God will also raise them by some miracle so that they can stand and face final sentencing at the great white throne. You see, just as to be absent from this body is to be present from the Lord, for an unsaved person to be absent from the body is to be in hell, awaiting the final judgment. So when I look at this place, and it's a sobering thought to think that some of the individuals who lie in this place are in the presence of God, and some of them are separated from God. And even today, as we prepared this message, I realize that even some of you that are listening, some of you have prepared, and some of you are unprepared. Which sin is it that will cause those individuals at that great white throne to be facing final judgment? Is it the sin of adultery? Is it the sin of murder? Lying? Is it the sin of sexual perversion? What is it? The answer is very simple. It's a rejection of his plan of salvation. It's a rejection of Jesus Christ. The offer has been made. Uh, The Bible tells us that God is not willing that any should perish. He does not want you to go to hell. He does not want me to go to hell. If we're ever in doubt about that, we only need to think of Calvary where a sinless Savior gave his life on the cross so that we could be ready one day to go to heaven. So where will you be when the trumpet sounds? Where will you be when Jesus comes? I hope that you know and I pray that you know that your life, your soul, your all, your eternity is in the hands of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, today we praise you and we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, as we stand in this place, Lord God, a a resting place, a dormitory, a sleeping place for the bodies of those who've gone on before. We're glad today that our hope can be in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're glad that when the trumpet sounds one day, Lord, we can be ready to meet Jesus. Father, I pray that every one of us would live in readiness. Lord, I believe we're racing toward judgment. We're racing toward the coming of the Lord. And I pray that you'll help us all to place our trust in you, that we can be ready. Thank you for the blessed hope that we have of your return. And Lord God, when the trumpet sounds, we want to be ready for your return. In Jesus' name, amen. Where will you be when the trumpet sounds? Mm Hmm.